Hey everybody, welcome to Theme Park Build. The goal of this series is to turn all the ground you see in front of you right now into an awesome theme park. This build series is going to be different than the other build series on my channel. First thing you're going to notice is I'm here by myself. And that was a big issue with the first three build series I've done. Zoo Build, Medieval Build, and Jurassic Build. They each had other people involved. And the problem is, when those other people lose interest in recording, I'm there by myself. And then everyone watching, just they want to see those other people in the series too, because that's what it's been all along. So in this series, I'm starting out by myself, just to set the ground that this is mostly going to be me. That doesn't mean other people aren't going to join in the future. I'm hope actually hoping to get more people involved. But for the most part, it's going to be me commentating with time lapses, which also solves another problem I was having with these build series is it would be four episodes of talking and not getting any work done and most of it being done off camera. But with this series, I plan on getting a lot of work done and explaining what I'm doing and why I'm doing it as I'm doing it. So here we go. As you can probably tell by the title of the video and the thumbnail, for this first video, I'm going to be building a ferris wheel. Where I'm building this thing right now isn't really set in stone. The fact that I haven't built an entrance to the park or any resemblance of an entrance makes me building the ferris wheel in this location kind of random. So there is a chance that it could be moved in the future depending on where things end up being put. I am using world edit, which you can probably tell by the fact that I just spawned in a giant chunk of stone. I will be using it throughout the entire series, even in this video you'll see me use it a bunch because it just saves so much time. The reason I spawned in a giant chunk of stone like this though is because I was just going for a general shape and deciding how big I wanted the station, and what I'm doing now is carving it and forming it into the exact shape of how I want it. The cut you saw me put into the middle of the station a little bit earlier is meant for the cars. When they come into the station, they're going to be in line with the station platform. You can easily just walk from the station into the car without any problem. In order to fight all the gray from the stone flooring, I decided to pick some colors to put on the outside. Yellow and blue, there was really no reason for why I picked those two colors, they just go well together. And then I decided to stripe it just to liven things up a bit. And then when I finished building the one side, I was able to copy and paste it to the other using World Edit. This next part, you're going to see me laying down the grate for the groove in the middle of the station. And this is the reason why I laid that sheet of bedrock down to begin with. I probably wouldn't have done that if it wasn't for this one part. For the actual material of the grate, it fell between the stone fence and the iron fence. And the iron fence just looked kind of weird. And the stone fence with the bedrock beneath it gave the look that I was looking for. Right here though, I realized something wasn't right. The station platform and the grate just it wasn't lining up correctly. And that's when I noticed I messed up the station. If you look, you can see the slabs go 3, 6, and then 3, and then the lowest part of the station. It should be 3, 3, 3, all the way down to the lowest. So I just had to correct that real quickly, and then things were back on track. So with the one side of the station done correctly and half the grate made, I was able to copy, rotate that one section 80 degrees, paste it again, and be done with the majority of the station. There are some finer details I'm going to add to it, but I'm going to save that for when I come back and create the queue and the exit. Next, we're going to be moving on to the cars. What I'm doing here is pretty much making a template for every car on the ferris wheel. What I'll do is I'll just edit this one car and copy and paste it into the ferris wheel. It's a lot easier than flying around the ferris wheel, building each individual car, or even copying and pasting them, because then you have to worry about ruining part of the wheel. And doing it this way just gets rid of that.
So with the car done, it's time to move on to the wheel. And what I'm doing here is copying and pasting the car into the very bottom of the Ferris wheel, just so I can get a reference on where I should start the wheel. Using the Minecraft Circles Guide, I went with the circle that has a diameter of 39 blocks, which will allow me to get 12 cars on the Ferris wheel altogether. What you see me doing here is checking just to make sure that everything lined up. Are there other ways of doing it? Yeah, probably, but what I do is I just go onto the very edge of the block and drop down to make sure it is in line. And now it's time for one of the most difficult parts of the build, and that is the inner supports. These supports are going to be where the cars are also attached, and trying to get them exactly even can be very difficult. What ended up helping me out though was I realized in between each support, there should be a total of 8 blocks, and if you don't understand what I mean, I'll show you that later on when I'm adding the cars to the Ferris wheel. And finally, to try to avoid as many user mistakes as possible, I'm just going to copy, flip, paste, and then copy the one side over, rotate it, and paste it again to have one side of the wheel complete. With the one side of the wheel done, it's time to move on to the supports for it. And there's really nothing too special about these supports. They just go from the center of the wheel down to the corners of the station platform. With those supports in, one whole side of the Ferris wheel is complete. What you can see me doing now is putting in the bars that are going to be holding the cars to the Ferris wheel. And as you can see, I am counting out 8 blocks, putting a bar, 8 blocks, putting a bar. Even though I put the ones under it and they will line up, I'm doing it just to make sure everything is still lined up and I didn't mess up somewhere. Once all those bars are in place, it's time to copy and paste again, and I did this in two different sections, one the wheel, and then the second one the supports, just to minimize any mistakes I might make when selecting the region to copy. And with that, the ferris wheel really starts to take shape, and the only thing really left to do is to add cars and then to finish the little minor touches on the station. Here you can see me start to add the cars to the ferris wheel. And as you can tell, I keep on going back to the original one we made earlier on in the episode. In order to change the colors though, what I've realized is because of the different colors of the clay, World Edit doesn't really recognize it. Things get weird with all the different ID numbers for the clay. And it just thinks of all the different colors of clay as clay. So what I had to do was change the clay to a different material and then change that different material to a different colored clay. It may be an extra step in the process, but at the end of the day it saves a lot more time. It's easier to do that than to replace every single block of clay on each cart.
And there you have a complete ferris wheel. The only thing left to do now is to put those finishing touches on the station. For the queue line, I just made a simple ramp down to the ground. Same colors, blue and yellow, nothing too fancy. I added the stone fence along the sides of the ferris wheel to give it a little more detail, plus I think it actually looks pretty cool. I added an iron fence along the edge of the groove again just to add that little bit of extra detail. And finally for the exit, just a short little path down to the ground. It doesn't have to be nearly as long as the queue line because people aren't going to be standing here. And that's it! And there you have it, a complete ferris wheel, the first major build of theme park build. There are a lot of little details I can add here, like a sign above the queue line, maybe something more with the exit in the back, maybe some lights on it with like sea lanterns and glowstone, maybe some redstone. I don't know how well that would work though. But I'm going to avoid doing any of that until I decide exactly where I want to put this thing. Next episode will probably be deciding that, where an entrance will be, and if I want to make it a park you have to pay to get into, or a free admission park. Free admission makes a lot more sense with Minecraft, and I'll explain more of that next episode. But until that happens, I'm going to avoid doing too much more work on this ferris wheel. This is generally going to be the format of these videos, so let me know what you think. Hopefully in the future I'll be able to get more people to join to help out building things and maybe I can even time lapse their builds and have them come and discuss what they're doing. But at the end of the day, this is a build series I want to complete and then eventually maybe open the server up for people to join and record some videos. It could be a lot of fun. So before I end up running out of footage here, I should probably wrap this up. So thank you all for watching. Leave a like and favorite if you enjoyed the help it a lot. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you next time.